So now let's focus on a question, an FE type question for brittle failure for a cantilever beam. In the previous question, we were using our failure theory for the maximum shear stress or the energy distortion theory, but that was only applicable to ductile failure, right? So for brittle failure, we have to use different theories. It's specifically the maximum normal stress theory or the more coulomb theory right this is in the reference book and it's going to be on page 446 in the new fe handbook and for brittle materials we're going to use the maximum normal stress theory or the coulomb more theory which are both applic applicable for brittle failure so once again in the previous question we we're focusing on ductile now we're looking at brittle and we're looking at static loading failure theories so we're going to focus on the maximum normal stress theory here and we know that the maximum normal stress theory states that failure occurs when one of the three principal stresses equals to the strength of the material. So what we're doing here is we're taking the material, we're taking it in the lab, we're testing it for the ultimate strength, whether it may be intention or compression, then based on our three principal stresses, that are applicable to the loading conditions we have if one of these equals to the strength of the material we know we have failure that's all it says for the maximum normal stress theory so if we go back to our question here we're told that brittle failure so brittle tells us we have to use those equations right for the cantilever beam shown below occurs at point O so we know we have point O we have some crack in here so we have we're assuming it's brittle failure and it's strictly in the vertical direction this is typical when you have a tension brittle failure so then we're told that the material here has the following properties so the ultimate this s u t is going to be ultimate tensile strength so ultimate tensile strength and we know that the bottom is S U C. It's the ultimate compression strength. So that's all we have there. And these are determined in the lab. And what we want to do here is select the columns for the stresses calculated that would cause failure. So we are trying to determine what would cause failure. And we want to select the column. Is it this column, column A, or column B, or column C, based on these principal stress conditions? So these are the principal stresses we're given. And they're in order from greatest to the smallest. So sigma 1 is the biggest. We know sigma 2 is going to be 0. This does not change, but sigma 3 does change. So we have these, and we want to select the column that would cause failure for the material and we know we have a brittle material, right? So what we can do here is apply that theory, the maximum normal stress theory. So let me quickly draw the Mohr circle here. And what we have essentially is, let's say on the x-axis, we have the stress. On the y-axis, we have the shear. So tau on the x-axis is sigma. So we know we're at sigma 1. Let's just look at A for the sake of visualizing this on a more circle. Let's look at A. So we know sigma 1 is around 144. It's positive. So it's going to be somewhere here. This is our sigma 1. And this equals to around 144.5 megapascals. And we know sigma 3 is going to be the negative 19.7. So let's just say it's somewhere here. So sigma 3 equals to negative 19.7. And we know sigma 2 is 0. So it's just in the middle. Sigma 2 equals 0. So what we will have here is two circles. So we're going to have a circle that's going to be, I'll use red. So we have one circle here. And we know we're going to have this other circle. We have two circles. And we know we're going to, these are going to be bounded by an envelope. 
which we will talk about later. And based on these two circles, what we will do is essentially use the maximum normal stress theory and we want to test is sigma 1 greater than our ultimate tensile strength or is sigma 3 greater than it, essentially greater than this is still greater than our ultimate compression strength or in other words it's less than the ultimate com compression strength which is going to be negative we have to notice here that it's negative as ultimate compression so it's going to be somewhere here our ultimate compression so let's plot that on the circle so our ultimate tensile strength based on these conditions is going to be 280 so let's plot that here 280 will be I'll use this color so this is 144 so 280 let's just say somewhere here this is s ultimate intention right and this is 280 now let's look at the compression one. The compression one is going to be the negative, right? Compression is negative 620. Be careful here. They might not give you the negative on the FE. You just have to know the compression is always negative, just like what you're comparing here. They have this negative sign. So we have to plot it on the left side. So this is negative 620. So it's going to be all the way here. So it's going to be negative 620. And this is S U C, ultimate compression strength. So what we do now is we know that if our sigma 1 is somewhere in this region and it crosses the ultimate, we know we have failure. And if sigma 3 is somewhere behind here, we have failure. So let's look at column A. And we're testing these conditions, right? So sigma 1 has to be greater than or equal to S ultimate. So we know that for column A, what we do is based on these, sigma 1 has to be greater than or equal to the S ultimate. And we know sigma 1 is what? It's going to be, we're looking at column A. It's going to be the 144. 144.5 everything is in units megapascals which is fine and SUT is the ultimate tensile strength is 280 right and we know this is not the case right it's less than Sigma 1 is less than 280 so we are okay we do not have failure we're okay just like what we have in the figure here since Sigma 1 is less than S ultimate we're looking specifically for this figure at column A right and we know we're okay we do not have failure but we have to test the other condition and I believe that one is obvious if you look that Sigma 3 has to be less than or equal to the negative S ultimate S ultimate in compression the ultimate compression strength so let's test that so Sigma 3 has to be less than or equal to negative S U C so we know sigma 3 I'm looking at this it's going to be negative 19.7 so negative 19.7 and we know s u c the ultimate compression strength is 620 so plug that on the right 620 and negative 620 be careful there so it's negative 620 so we know obviously this the negative 19.7 is going to be greater than the negative 620 it's greater than right it's not less than so it's somewhere here we're not all the way out here if we were here we would fail right so it's somewhere it's greater than going to the right is greater right so it's gonna be greater than so we are okay we do not have failure so we're okay with that one so that's all we have here that's for column A so we know column A we're okay so we do not have failure now let's look at column B you do the same things column B and what we do is test this so Sigma 1 has to be greater than or equal to S U T what Sigma 1 we're looking at column B it's gonna be the 160 160.5 and we know the ultimate tensile strength it does not change for the material it's 
280 given above. So we know that 280 is going to be bigger than the 160.5. So that's that. So we're okay for this one. So we're okay in tension. But we still have to test the compression. So the compression, sigma 3, has to be less than or equal to the negative ultimate compression strength. What's sigma 3? We're looking at column B. Column B is negative 7, negative 7, 22. And we know the negative 620 does not change the ultimate compression strength for the material. But we know here, we realize that it is going to be, the negative 620 is indeed greater than the negative 722. So it does meet this condition, so we do have failure. So we do have failure here, so we do fail. And this is specific when we're looking at compression. So column B, we do indeed fail. So let's choose that as an answer choice. So on the FE, you would just select this column. So this is one answer that causes failure. And now let's look at column C. So you just apply the same principle. So you test the tension first. The sigma 1 has to be greater than the ultimate tensile strength. And we know sigma 1 for column C is 295. Plug in 295 on the left. The ultimate tensile strength does not change. Where where do we get that? This should be given to you on the FE. It's 280 for the material. 280. And we know that this is indeed greater than the 280. So it does meet the following criteria. So we do fail. So we do fail. So automatically we know that column C does indeed fail. So you just have to have one of those conditions or criteria map in order to fail. Because it says either we have this or this in order to have failure. So we know in this answer that we would select B and C and that these are the principal stresses that would cause failure. And we're specifically looking at brittle failure using the maximum normal stress theory. So if we wanted to use the other theory, the Coulomb-Moore theory, you, we would get the same answers. So we know we have an envelope here. And we know that the Coulomb-Moore theory states that fracture will occur for any stress situation that produces a circle that is either tangent to or crosses the envelope defined by the lines tangent to the ultimate the ultimate tensile strength and the ultimate compression strength circle. So that's what that says and we can test that using this envelope and which we did draw approximately here the envelope and what all you have to do for the Coulomb Moore theory is use these equations. So let's use that equation real quick for the sake of finishing this question so let's do for column c specifically i want to see does it indeed fail and does it confirm what we got from the other theory the maximum normal stress theory so all we have to do is use that equation so we take sigma one over sigma ultimate so let me write that sigma one over s ultimate sorry intention minus our sigma three divided by our s ultimate in compression right sigma 3 divided by our s ultimate in compression and we know this has to be greater than or equal to 1 for yielding or failure to occur so if we plug plug in what we have sigma 1 is going to be 295 i'm looking at column c and we have us ultimate is going to be 280 then we do minus our sigma 3 is what sigma 3 we know is going to be this negative 550. So keep that negative, negative 550. Divided by our S ultimate in compression. Our ultimate compression strength is 620. So you can do the math for this. And let me do it real quick on my calculator. You do 295 divided by 280 minus negative 550. Be careful there. The S ultimate in compression, just plug in 620. You don't have to plug in that negative. So you get around 1.94. And we know that 1.9, so it's around 1.9, 1.94. We know 1.9 is greater than 1 
So we do indeed fail. So we're just checking that this theory works as well. So you should get the same answer for both theories. So column C does indeed cause failure. So our answer should be B and C. You can check both theories. They should work. And again, this is for brittle failure. And when you're using this, the maximum normal stress theory and the Coulomb more theory. But that's all for this question. Please subscribe and like and take care.